All right, so I want to talk about the track of our Tropical Storm Choi Wan, also known as Dante, in the Philippines. Because I know from the initial warning to the final warning, it, it changed drastically. And first of all, you got to remember that tropical forecasting, this does happen. In recent years, you know, we, we've had significant improvements. The guidance has been much better. Um, but you know, most of the forecasts have been fairly correct. But if you go back 10 years ago, a ch change in the track like that was exceptionally common. This one, the models did not handle well. And if you notice, every single agency kind of missed the ball on it. it. It was expected to go north. It went west. And I can tell you before I explain what really kind of happened here, that every forecaster, including myself, I, I felt rough after this track towards the west. I have friends at Pegasa. I know that they're trying their hardest and they can only do so much with what's available to them. And same with the guys at JTWC. You know, I have friends there as well. And I know that they're great forecasters. But this storm just struggled. One reason, the model guidance is only as good as what you put into it. We don't have typhoon hunters in the Western Pacific. We don't have buoys. We don't have balloon launches in this area. So all you're getting is satellite data, basically, that is, it gets digested into these global models. And sometimes they miss the ball, especially with a changing storm. And what happened with Dante Choi Wan was that it was getting acted upon an upper level low towards north. It had a plenty of wind shear and it was basically getting tilted to the, to, to its side. And when a storm system kind of gets tilted towards its side and it gets exposed in that low level center, which we've seen, uh, what happens is the steering flow changes a little bit. So I think the guidance was expecting that vertical structure so the entire atmosphere would act on it. And if that happened, that would help lift it and pull it towards the north, skirting the east coast of the Philippines. But once it tilted a little bit, all we had was that low level flow. And what happens? Where's the wind coming from in this part of the world this time of year? east to west, the easterlies out there around Palau towards Mindanao. And our storm system, what happened? It just followed the easterlies. It's it's tough. And it's something that um, none of the guidance picked up on. You know, it, it, I, I'm sure some of the forecasters probably thought about it. I thought about it at one point. I was like, okay, this keeps on leaning west. The, the the upper level clouds are leaning west. The low level exposed circulation is trying to keep up with those upper level clouds. But all the guidance wasn't pointing at it. It's it's one of those times you got to learn from the situation. Don't always rely too much on the models and kind of, uh, you know, know what's happening. But I just want to address it because I in my comment section, 90% of you guys are fantastic. You get it. You understand that this can be tough and especially in this part of the world. But there's a few people who are just saying it was so wrong. Everybody's the worst. And I want to explain kind of the... Um, the process as to what happened with this storm and my heart really goes out to everybody who was impacted by it the uh people that there was people that lost their lives in the storm and let they uh mindoro significant flooding there as well in these areas that weren't originally expecting to be hit by the storm so yeah um not so that's all for now yeah it's just uh kind of just talking to the camera in this one here